Okay, so we'll begin with one of our familiar mantras, the Shanti mantra. Well, not so recent, but I think it will be familiar. The invocation of peace and well being for all beings. So, wherever you are, just bringing to mind the parts within your being that need a little shanti, but also as we're calling on an infinite energy, you can direct that energy out to others as well. To begin together with a single arm, inhale. Oh. Om Sahana Vavatu. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahana Bunaptu. Sahana Bunaptu. Sahaviyam Karvava Hey. Sahaviyam Karvava Hey. Teshes Vinam. Teshes Vinam. Batita must do. Batita must do. Marvid Vishava hey. Marvid Vishava hey. Om Sahana Vavatu. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahana Bunaptu. Sahana Bunaptu. Sahaviriam Karvava hey. Sahaviriam Karvava hey. Teshes Vinam. Teshes Vinam. Batita must do. Batita must do. Marvid Vishava hey. Marvid Vishava hey. Om Sahana Vavatu. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahanao Bunaptu, Sahanao Bunaptu, Sahaviriam Karva Behe, Sahaviriam Karva Behe, Teshes Vinam, Teshes Vinam, Batita must do, Batita must do, Marvid Vishava Hey, Marvid Vishava Hey. Inhale. Om Shanti 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 Okay, so when you're ready, if you're lying down, slowly make your way up to sitting. We'll begin tonight in sitting. And bring right leg in front of left leg. So just resting the hands on the knees for a moment. Gently draw, draw with, pull on the hands, pull the hands on the knees to draw the chest up right, shoulder blades broaden down. Bringing hands together at the heart. Just feel the hands lightly touching and gently press the hands together. Just maximizing the surface of the hands and particularly aware of that ball of the index finger and the base of the thumb. And then we're going to inhale, bring the arms up. Inhale up, exhale down through your comfortable range of movement. Just noticing when the on that is a feeling of needing to contain the shoulder blades. Is it, Tammy, is there something interfering with your microphone? 
Yeah, attempt uh, loads of interference. Is there? Yeah. Let me just change the microphone. I'll just try another one. How's that? It's Is okay so far, but it was in, it was intermittent. So I'll report back if it comes back. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What Amy said. Inhale up, exhale down. And particularly as you take the arms up, just still feel the hands gently pressing into each other. So with the hands together, you may not get all the way up. You need to separate the arms to go higher, separate the hands to go higher. So keeping the hands together keeps the elbows and armpits turned in. Now, as you come back down, just come back to the starting position and just feel the breadth across the front of the chest, the breadth across the back of the chest. And press the hands firmly together. And then once more, inhale up and exhale, turn to the right side. So hold the shoulders in position, gently turn the head side to side, loosen the neck. And then inhaling to centre, folding forward from the tail. So maybe shuffle with the tailbone back off the back edge of the bolster. And don't come so far forward that you can't still keep the shoulders broad. So bring the focus on coming forward from the tail, keeping the back straight and reground the palms down into the floor. Ball of index finger, base of thumb. And gently pull the hands back in to draw the chest forward. So there's a sense of drawing and lengthening through the spine. Really feeling like you're lifting the tail, you're poking the tail out the back. So these bent leg forward bends take a little bit of the um, stretch out of the hamstrings and sacral leg joint or they facilitate a more comfortable action that we lose with straight leg forward bends. So they're often safe for sacral leg joints and hamstrings. And then inhale, come up, change the cross of the legs. Pull the hands into the knees to draw the chest up. Bring the hands together at the heart. And before we begin now, just feel breadth across the back of the chest, breadth across the front of the chest, palms pressing lightly together. And moving again through your comfortable range of movement. Inhale up, exhale down. Uh, next exhale, pausing, press the hands firmly together, feel the strength in the shoulders, and then once more inhale up and exhale, turn to the left. Hold the shoulders in position and turn the head side to side. A 
nice and gently loosening the neck. And inhale back to center, folding forward from the tail, keeping the back straight. Re-establishing that pressure of the palms down firmly on the floor. Drawing the chest forward, shoulder blades broaden down. And just sitting on the edge of that hip opening. Okay, lovely. Inhale and come up and come over to hands and knees. Same hand focus. So a little bit more weight now on the on the arms. Wrist crease parallel to the front of the mat. So that might mean index fingers parallel or middle fingers parallel. And again, focusing particularly on that, it's like the arch of the hand between the ball of the index finger base and the thumb. Okay, it's hard work to hold that press down. Okay, but hold that press down, broaden the shoulders, and then one leg at a time, gently stretching out into each Achilles. Arms strong, keep pushing the chest up into the backs of the shoulder blades as you then push out into each leg. And then when you're even side to side, step the right leg forward. So lunge and lengthen, moving through your comfortable range of movement. If it doesn't feel so good for the hamstring, you could try taking the right foot out to the side. So you've got that bent, uh, that outwardly rotated hip position. For any ailment, just moving through your comfortable range of movement. So you can try and make little adjustments not to put strain on sore tissues. And a reminder for the sacroiliac joint, when the legs bend, you've got this capacity to lift the tail. So perhaps stopping short of straightening the leg to keep that your belly lying along the thighs. And a nice attitude of curiosity. Okay, be interested in your body, interested in what works for it. And let's change legs. Exactly the same thing on the second side. If you made adjustments, then keep them the same side to side pretty much. Inhale, lunge, exhale, lengthen.
Okay, lovely. And then place the hand firm, push back, back to hands and knees. Now, two options here. If you want a nice, strong shoulder stretch, stay in half dog. Or maintaining that upper back and shoulder opening, press out into full dog. So again, feel when the hamstrings are off stretch, whether the knees are bent or whether you're still, if you're in half dog, feel how much easier it is for the spine to release forward. You're really folding forward from the tailbone. So really feel and enjoy that. You're moving into the full down face dog. You don't want to lose that leading from the tailbone. Okay, so wherever you are, come back now to hands and knees. Okay, hands and knees. And just watching me for a minute, we're going to bring the arm into the cactus arm position and move from the cactus arm position to the position that we started with in sitting. So it's like a scooping of the arm forward. Inhale, exhale, maybe three times on each arm, just alternating sides. So it's from like cactus arm position to that position we began with. Okay, and just feel, feel what happens with the shoulder blade. As the arm comes high, you need to work the muscles in the upper back to contain that shoulder blade. So be curious about that. All the time attentive to the breath. You feel the abdominal core muscles and pelvic floor engaging. Just changing sides in your own time. And once more each side, if you need a break anytime, you can rest in child pose or we'll stretch out in down dog. So evening up your sides, stretching down dog, half dog or resting child. Okay, and then again, back to hands and knees. If you need to just give your wrists a break for a minute, if you weren't in child pose, if you're in child pose, just give the wrist a little turn. You're going to come back into that strong arm position. So really important. Hopefully this is becoming a really good habit now, this pressure of the palms on the floor. So spread the fingers wide, maximise the contact of the palms with the floor. Push the back of the chest up into the shoulder blades. 
And then with the, the strong arms assisting, we're going to lift one leg at a time. And maybe just loosening with the breath, inhale up, exhale down. And then as you're comfortable to hold the leg up for three or four breaths each side. I feel all of the body's got a roll here. Arms, upper back, abdominal core, buttock muscles, feel everything contributing to holding the body in position. And when you're even side to side, one more rest or one more down face dog. We're going to progress it one step further. So resting or stretching, just coming back to symmetry. And then finally, one last time, hands and knees. So you can work with just the arms or just the legs or trying to bring it all together now, lifting the leg and moving the arm from the cactus arm position to arm overhead for four breaths, three breaths, five breaths. Other arm, grounded arm nice and strong. And just in your own time, change sides. From the cactus arm position, you're kind of scooping the elbow in, the scooping action. Then evening up your sides. Keep it nice and slow and controlled. When you're even side to side, everyone take rest in child pose. Okay, and then when you're ready, inhale, come up, 
hands and knees and come all the way up to standing and standing into Dasana. So feet hip width apart. Spread the toes wide. Maximize the contact of the arches of the foot. Ball a big toe, ball a little toe in the heel. And pressing the feet down, enliven the legs. Just have a little side, side to side. So without the shoulders now, just gently side to side, stroking down each leg. And when you're in side to side, come back upright, bring the arms into the cactus bound position. Broaden across the front of the chest. But see also if you can broaden across the back of the chest. And then turning through the rib cage to twist side to side. So we're maintaining that position of the shoulders. The turning comes through the waist. Inhale, turn, exhale, center. All the time keeping the shoulders nice and broad. And when you're back to centre, step the feet wide. Hands on the hips, gently figure eight the hips. Change the direction of the figure eight. Okay, now let's turn the right foot out to 90, left toes deeply in. Turn all the way around to face the right side. Now, if you like, you can bring your back heel up so you can really get your pelvis facing around to the front. Some of you might manage to do that with the back heel down and you'll feel a little bit more steady. And then bringing the arms back up to the cactus arm position. Now, just staying there, take some nice big deep breaths, feel the spine ascending up through the shoulders. So you can see my elbows are a little bit ahead of my shoulders, which helps me to get the breadth across the back of the chest. And then we're going to scoop the arms up again. Inhale up, exhale down. Feeling the containment of the shoulder blades. Continue with the movement, or if you like holding the arms up in full warrior one. Lift the chest, lengthen the spine. It feels a little bit like the shoulder blades are resisting the raise of the arms. And gentle bias, keep turning the elbows and armpits in. Sinking a little bit deeper in the knee bend if you're willing. Three more breaths. And exhale, straighten the legs, hands to the hips, feet to the front. Take a few breaths. Okay, 
this second side, left foot out to 90, right toes deeply in, in, in fact, back heel up if you wish. Bend the left knee. Cactus arms. Feel the breath, front of the chest, back of the chest. Neck really free. When the shoulders are broad, the neck's free. And then from that position, scooping the arms up into the warrior one. Inhale up, exhale back down. Sensing the containment of the shoulder blades. Continue with the movement in and out or stay there. Lift the chest up and forward, reaching up to the fingertips, shoulder blades gently drawing down broad. And then exhale, hands to the hips, feet to the front. Relax and breathe. Okay, now if you like, you can use the brick. We're going to come into classical Pashtakanasan. We're going to come into from this cactus arm position. So brick or you can rest your elbow and bent knee. I'm going to come to the cactus arm position to open the chest and then we're going to scoop the arm forward in the same way we have for warrior one. The right foot out to 90, left toes deeply in. Heels are in line now. Bend the right knee, send it out over the middle toes and slide down, elbow to knee or hand to brick. Inhale into the cactus arm position. Okay, so just stay there for a moment. Feel that chest opening facilitated. And then feel again, the arm scoops up and forward overhead. Inhale, exhale. Moving in and out of it a few times. And then if your neck and shoulder is comfortable too, staying in the position, reaching up overhead, but shoulder blades contained. Shoulder blades from down and broad. And broad this time means up. Try to feel the legs really active. Don't take all the weight onto that hand on the brick. Okay, and then strum in the legs, push up. And pop your brick to your second side. Left foot out to 90, right toes in. Bend the left knee. Slide the hand down to the brick or elbow to the knee and inhale, cactus arm. Okay, and then just playing with the movement of the arm overhead. Inhale, sweeping forward, exhale back to the cactus arm. Having a little play with the transition. And then as you want, you can keep the arm overhead. Like a, a nice straight line from the fingertips to the outer right heel. Gazing up to the hand or down to the floor as best serves your neck. Just 
Okay, and then strengthen the legs, push up. Hands to the hips, feet to the front, relax. Okay, let's turn right foot out to 90 again, left toes in, you can pop your bricks to the side. Okay, hands on the hips for a moment and bend the right knee nice and deep, come back into the warrior one leg position. Now with that knee bent, just lean forward, coming forward from the tailbone. Now some of you might like just to stay there and take the arms wide. Keep the chest lifted, that's a nice back strengthening option. So stay with that or sweep the arms forward into Strike Warrior. Perhaps moving in and out of it a few times before you hold the position. So taking the arms forward in any of these poses usually makes it harder. The deeper you come, the harder it is for the hamstring. So just be mindful. Okay, and then with an exhale, bring the hands down, hands to the hips, feet to the front. Catch your breath. Second side, left foot out to 90, right toes deeply in, turning to the left, bend the left knee. Now with the hands on here, you can feel that tip of the pelvis forward. So you're coming forward, pelvis dropping forward over the left leg, and then arms to the side, staying there, just feeling the strength in the upper back to hold the arms, all working. A little bit harder still, perhaps moving in and out of it. Or keeping the arms straight overhead. Exhale, arms down, hands to the hips, feet to the front, breathe. Okay, and then step the feet together, come back into Tadasana. So we're going to come into warrior three from Tadasana and you have the option of bringing the arms overhead. So in fact, we'll start with the arms overhead. I've still got a head chopped off a little bit there. So inhale, arms up and then exhale, calming forward, right leg first. And then if it feels strong in the upper back, then just release the arms back down by the side. And just to... The, the focus, you want to keep the upper back open. So if the arms overhead collapses the upper back, then better to have them by the side. Okay, anyone with hamstring issues, so Rosie, anyone else, don't, leap, don't come all the way forward, come halfway down. Okay, just monitor, it'll be the grounded leg hamstring that doesn't like it. Okay, in your own time, let's aim for six breaths. Okay. 
and exhaling gracefully, more gracefully than I did. Okay, second side. So when you inhale and bring the arms overhead, just make sure those elbows in, shoulders down, and exhale, tipping forward. Lift the tail, lift the chest, coming as deeply into it as you can manage comfortably. Counting for six breaths. Okay, and then gracefully lowering. Step the feet together. Two options if you're comfortable with the forward bend, Uttanasan. Hamstrings, sacroiliac joint might prefer coming into a nice little squat. Wherever we are, relaxing. Can you, yeah, hang on to something to get those heels down if you need. Okay. okay lovely. Let's come down to the wall, come into your wall, Bacarsen, or couch, Bacarsen. Chins under the knees as you need. So try to get the shin as far back into the wall as you can. As you loosen into it, feel free to bring the arms into play. So you can have hands behind head. Create that arch in the upper back. Make sure it's not all in the low back. You can stretch up one arm at a time. Just have a little play there. So we loosened the back, the waist for side bending. So you can have a little side bend. Dope. Let's change sides.
Okay, and then if you're fairly even side to side, then let's come down. So straight the wall or straight the couch and come down with both knees back into the wall. And you don't have to come very high with this. Some of you have the flexibility to do that, and that's fine. You can try and get your head on your feet, go to town, okay? But the, the hardest bit of it is actually just the first bit. So just lifting head, neck, and shoulders, trying to create the opening in the upper back. So for some of you, that, that'll be much more beneficial just to stay with that. Exhale, nose to the floor. Inhale, lift, head, neck, shoulders. Just imagine you've got that brick between your shoulder blades and you're trying to arch around that brick. And those of you that do have lots of flexibility in the upper back, then you're just going to you bring the hands back in and without losing the upper back movement, then lift a little bit higher into the low back. Feel how strong the arms are in that lift as well. See if you can keep your shoulders broad. And that's really about arm strength, keeping the shoulders broad. The arms need to work a lot stronger, as do the muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade down. So feel that action. The spine's still ascending up through the shoulders as you're pushing up, reversing the curve in the upper back. And then next time you come down, just relax. wiggle away from the chair or the wall or the, the couch and we're going to come down so lying over the brick now some of you if you found it quite easy that back bending bit you can come into Supta Virasana otherwise feet together knees wide Supta Baddha Konasana and bricks that little bit lower so you've got your two options there move the camera we're just making sure the neck and the back are comfortable they have as much support as you need to stay comfortable kind of a little bit uncomfortable perhaps where the bricks dig into your back. But everything else, neck and low back comfortable.
Feel the breath gently opening the front of the chest. And the exhale body relaxing around the props. Surrendering, allowing the props and gravity to gently open the body, to lengthen the spine, to open the rib cage. Okay, now when you're ready to support the head, tuck the chin to the chest and come out of that position. And I give you two options. Flat pigeon if your hips and knees are okay with it, or if you prefer figure four, maybe figure four at the wall so you can relax your upper body. You can bring the foot up the wall. And I quite like to have the bolster under my hips to get that little bit higher lift. Wherever you are, just setting yourself up so you're resting on the edge of the opening. You're not uncomfortable, particularly in flat pigeon. No pain in the knees, no pain in the hips. Upper body completely relaxed now. Okay, when you're ready, change leg.
Okay, release. If you're in flat pigeon, just press back into down dog or child. If you're on your back, just hug your knees into your chest for a moment. Now, some of you might like to be at the wall. Your options are going to be a bridge from the floor, option one, two, a bridge from the wall. So some of you benefit from that. Both of those are really good for the hamstring and should be pretty comfortable for the sacroiliac joint. Number three is after you've done a few of that, if anyone wants to have a little press up into half shoulder stand, full shoulder stand, if you feel inclined. So just a little opportunity, or you can use the brick, take the brick under the hips in the set of under, so if you're not inverting, that's a good option after a few bridges. And you've also got the brick supported vipari de carne or half shoulder stand. So just having a little play with those options. Wherever you are, nice, comfortable breath. Most of you will be in a position where you can feel Jalanda or Abanda on the inhale. So particularly if you're at the wall, just feel it's a nice way to accustom the neck and the upper back to taking that little bit more weight. So moving in and out of it, not staying in it too long, particularly if you've got high blood pressure, just being very cautious. You can perhaps move in and out of it a few times, but better to keep the legs down, better perhaps to stay with the bridge. And then over the next minute or so, slowly coming out of your position and we'll meet back lying on the belly. So relaxing on the belly, gently rock the pelvis side to side, relax the hips, relax the back, relax the neck. It's a preparation for shoulder stand, but also a counter pose for shoulder stand coming into the sphinx or a gentle bhujangasana. So have that hands a little bit ahead of the shoulders, a little bit wider than the shoulders, and similar to what we did at the wall before. Inhale, lift head, neck, shoulders, first prioritising the open in the upper back.
Some of you may come a little bit higher. Now you can stay with that or add in a lift of an alternate leg. So upper back still assisted, inhale up, exhale down. Now you can rest and repeat that or stronger again, slide the hands back down by the side of the body, lift head, neck, shoulders and one leg at a time, lifting now with the back muscles. Okay, and then when you're even side to side, just relax down again. I'm just going to get you to finish with something a little more subtle. So we're going to stay resting down. And then we're going to lift just the shoulder girdle. So you can rest on one cheek and change cheeks each inhale and exhale, or just rest on the forehead. And we're just going to lift the shoulders, lift the shoulder blades on an inhale, lower them completely on an exhale. And then be still, be completely still, except for the breath. Position the head so the neck's comfortable. Okay, stay there, or if you're comfortable to, push back into child pose. Child pose for a moment to release the back. And then as you like, coming to sitting for a few minutes or directly into Shavasana, just do a little bit of aware breathing, ujjayi pranayama before settling into relaxation. If you're sitting, sit comfortably, spine long. At any stage you feel you can transition to Shavasana. So wherever you are, closing your eyes, bringing your attention to the breath in your spine. Gently throat sound the breath. This little bit Darth Vader breathing. That just gives the mind something, a sound to attach to. Breathe out right to the end. Allow the breath, 
the in-breath to be natural and free. We inhale, feeling from bottom up. We exhale, emptying from top down. Breath soothing the nervous system, calming the mind, relaxing the body. So continue in sitting if you like, or at the end of the next exhalation, just relaxing the breath and making your way to Shavasana. A little power Shavasana.
Resting in the stillness of being awareness. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Just being. Coming slowly out of your practice. And slowly making your way back up to sitting. And sitting comfortably, spine long. If you'd like to join me closing with three arms, bring hands together at your heart. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Gently bow your head to your hands. Namaste.